You are listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics with a unique perspective. Here's your wild card, Richard Kearney, and your whimsical, Ryan Pulley. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another wonderful edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, what's good? Ah, uh, you know, it's Tuesday. But every day above ground's a good day. Yeah. Can't complain. As long as they're not shoveling dirt on you yet. And even if you do complain, nobody pays attention, so it's all right. Welcome to my world. <laughs> It's you, the world in general. You do anything fun and exciting for Thanksgiving? Mm, ate some turkey. The usual, okay. Yeah, now, I will say this. Major. I will say this. Now that I've digested my turkey, I'm okay with holiday music now. Prior to that, I didn't want to go nowhere hear that mess, but now I can officially say I can take it. Yeah, I can take it or leave it. This isn't my favorite time of year, so. Yeah, um, things were different when we were younger. Yeah. One thing we used to do when I was younger, we had a tradition. Uh, the whole family would get together and we'd go see a movie. On either Thanksgiving or Christmas Day. Now that hasn't happened in years. And. The movies this year have all. According to most people sucked. Um, have three. They? Three good examples of box office bombs. Have so far have been Napoleon. The Marvels. And Killers of the Flower Moon. Now. Before I backtrack to those three movies. I guess there were two hits, if you want to call them that, earlier this year, Oppenheimer and Barbie, which mm. I have no interest in Oppenheimer, and you won't catch me watching Barbie anything, so. So why doesn't Oppenheimer interest you? Well, I know what happened. And two, there was a TV show. Um, I forget the name of it. It's one that uh, Heather and I watched maybe two years back that went through the whole thing. So been there, done that. You've seen Titanic, haven't you? Yeah. You knew what was going to happen? Oh, well, I, like I said, I've seen the TV show. So I mean, you I still went to see, see it. That's what that's just what I'm saying. You still went to see the movie. You you, you knew from all the documentaries you've seen <laughs> as a kid what happened Titanic. That's not a good excuse. But I guess it no, just I doesn't not, grab me. It it doesn't grab me. It might me. be something I, you know, I check when it's on streaming service or something, you know. I, I, I think might this week I might look at streaming. It. I, I think. But, and I think that's the major reason why the box office had bombs is because people aren't going to the theaters. Yeah. That's just, you know, less people. I mean, what you just said about Oppenheimer, we could say the same for Napoleon. Yeah. Yet one of them was a success and one of them has been a bomb. But Napoleon just came out. Yeah. So, I mean, Oppenheimer has been out for a minute, so we'll see. So you think Napoleon can rise to the occasion and become a success too? Not necessarily, but define success. Well, it has to at least make its money back. It won't in the theaters. I don't think any movie for the most part is going to make, I mean, unless it stays in there an extended period of time because people aren't going. Yeah, I, I think it, our next, the next good movie successful movie as far as financial it's going to be one of those movies that uh very low budget 
little to no effects. And uh, because of that, it will be financially successful. Yeah, because it'll have a low bar to yeah. to clear. I'm not surprised that the Marvels bombed. You know, because the Marvel character, you know, Captain Marvel in the Wanda Diaries or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they they basically introduced her at the very end. The Miss Marvel, the little chick, you know, the ending, that never was exciting. I, I never even seen that. Captain Marvel, I mean... We've already seen one movie, and she's been in the other one, so she's not like a major character, I guess. I, but I can just see if she if it was just her, maybe it would have better. I think it's kind of like She Hulk. She Hulk didn't really do very well in in you know overall. True, you know just. Even though it had Mark Ruffalo's Hulk in there and they introduced his son and all that. Scar or Sh Scar, right? That's yeah, the name. Yeah, you got it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, most of the writing for She Hulk was lame, too. Most of the writing in Miss Marvel was lame. I mean, I think I've only got the three episodes. I'm like, yeah, psh, I already know what happens. I mean, I know how she gets her powers, I know what she does. You know, this is stupid to me. Glad I didn't, so, didn't watch it. Nah, I mean, if I'm bored and there's nothing else on, then, you know, I may, I may eventually finish the series, but mm. yeah, the Marvel, Marvel movies in general, I think superhero movies in general, I think are, have saturated us so much that we're just, eh, you know. Yeah. That goes back to what you said earlier, been there, done that. You um, know, and they, you know, in the first. Uh, you know, just speaking about Marvel, you know, they had a whole storyline with with Thanos, and it it created intrigue throughout all of the characters' movies and so forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, they keep changing their mind who the villain's going to be in this next phase. So, I think Jonathan Majors is back on the board. Nope, they said they're canceling the Kang dynasties and Silver Surfer and, and Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom's going to be the villain. Mm. Wow. Well, and the King Dynasties will be in the next phase, at the ending phase of the whole genre. Good luck to Marvel then. Now, right. speaking of Disney, there's a thing going on called Cancel Disney Plus. Um, it, why, why it's, now? Well, people are starting to get upset because once again, Disney has decided that they are going to raise prices again. Um, what happened is uh, the most recent Disney price increase and more, it looks like some fans have hit their limit. And as unflattering a statement as it currently is, it's trending. And uh, Disney's third quarter earnings, um, that's when they did it. And they called for uh, the ad-free version of disney and the subscription prices to jump uh from its current price of 10.99 to 13.99 per month and that started i believe in october i forget uh, i was one of the casualties of that mm. i have the commercial free version so it's a little higher than that but i weighed it and i did not want to drop back and get the commercials. And I am glad for that. Because like I said. When it happened on a previous show. I've got ads with Hulu. And I get tired of it. Every five minutes we jump to a commercial break. When I'm trying to get into something. So I mm -hmm. don't want that for my Disney. However. As I did mention then too. I don't know how many more price increases. I'm going to be able to take on this thing. Right. Plus, I mean, unless they have some outlandish content that you can't get anywhere else. Right. I mean, I guess they, they really do, you know, with the Marvel and Star Wars universe, but there'll come a point where enough's enough. Now, they are going to start uh, 
putting out some of their content on DVD and Blu-ray again because they know that there are people that absolutely will not stream their services. I believe uh, December 5th, the first season of Loki comes out on Blu-ray and the first two seasons of The Mandalorian come out on Blu-ray. And later on in December, WandaVision will be out and something else, I can't remember what, but it'll be coming our way. Now, even though I do have Disney+, Plus, I do have all my Star Wars movies on Blu-ray. So The Mandalorian will be a nice little addition to the shelf there. And everybody who knows me, they know, hey, I'm all about that physical media still. Because of situations just like this. Because at any minute, I might pull the plug. My kid might be like, Daddy, I don't want to do Disney Plus anymore. Let's get Netflix or whatever. All right. But, bye bye, Mouse. But you them, that, but, you know. them DVDs ain't going nowhere. You'll you always be able to get them one. Well, I think you'll always you'll be able to get them. But a you'll lot always of these, be able to get them once they're out. But a lot of these channels refuse to put anything out anymore on physical media. I'm looking at you, Netflix. No, no, I I agree. I'm just saying that, like, you just said, in case you decide to cut Disney Plus, like I said, mm -hmm. once they put their stuff on DVD or Blu-ray, whatever, it's never going to go away. You can always get it. So, yeah. To me, I don't want to pay for the same thing twice. I, I do hate double dipping, but, <clears throat> you know, if, if I had known... Well, I'm not going to say that because I was going to say if I had known that it would finally come out, I probably wouldn't have had Disney Plus. But how many years has it been since the first two seasons of Mandalorian? You know, right. I, you know, I ain't holding out. <laughs> you know, I ain't holding out. All right. I don't want to I don't want to dog on Disney Plus anymore. Let's dog on Target. What Target do? All right. Target employee was outraged after hundreds of candy products were pulled from the shelves and marked destroy. They are still good until next year. Now, I'm going to talk about other people besides Target, but this came from Target. Uh, food waste is a serious problem in the United States. And according to um, a non-organized call, non-organization called Refed. I didn't even know that was the name of it, Refed. Okay. 91 million tons of surplus food is generated throughout this nation in 2021 alone. And uh, there are a number of reasons to be frustrated by this development. For one, 35.9% of this total end up in landfills where it will contribute to the production of methane, which is, you know, bad for our planet. Global warming, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. And anyway, it doesn't matter whether the food is nutritious or not. Waste is waste. I'm not going to go into the entire article but I understand where they were coming from. They had all these boxes of snacks and goodies and they were like, we don't have room for it. Destroy it. What? I mean, this is me. This is me. Give it away. It doesn't even have to be to your employees. Give it away to the public. Put it in front of the store and say, hey, you come on in, grab some candy while you shop. That's a better look for Target then tossing it and then like i said i'm going to look at other people because you know way back in my youth I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was but i worked at a fast food place where after so much time under the heat lamp throw it away what throw it away we we don't want to sell it can i take it home no that's against company policy we'll throw it away why that was the stupidest thing. We are so wasteful. All right, I'm off my soapbox. I mean, I can't disagree with any of that. I mean, you're spitting facts. Yeah, I mean, people would rather destroy However, something instead of getting, instead of losing their bottom line. Well, they're not losing their bottom line. So I'm coming at you from a logistical brain. Well, well let okay. me tell you how they're losing their bottom line. If they give it away, it's gone. If they throw it away, 
they can write it off and get money back yes. from tax time. Yeah, that's it's insurance. That's how they get it. That's mm-hmm. so they don't lose their money. Yeah, that's that's actually smart business. It may not be good. It may not be good for. It may not be good for the for the environment or for the you know it may not be the good Samaritan way of thinking. But I guarantee you, buddy, if your ass was writing the checks, <laughs> you would tell them to trash that shit too. I can't argue that. I'm not going to argue know, that because he I mean, be right. logist logistically, you know, I deal with that. You know, we might. I might deliver a load somewhere and, you know, five cases are, are, you know, shifted on in, in transit and the, the receiver won't take it. So we have to destroy it and show pictures that it was destroyed so they can recoup it with their insurance. No matter what it is. I mean, it could be ding dongs, Twinkies, bottles of water. It could be anything. Yeah. And everybody knows the Twinkie will last 20 years. If not more. Uh, Right. I know. And then that just tells you right there, you shouldn't really be eating it because uh, if it can last 20 years, I don't know what that's going to do to the inside of your body there. I I had one Twinkie when I was younger. They're good. I didn't like a Twinkie. My brother loved them Twinkies, but I didn't like them. I was was more of the ho-hos and the cupcakes and the honey buns were my favorite. You, you can't get rid of me. I mean, there's not a bad honey bun on the planet, so I got you. But Twinkies aren't bad. Ho-Hos are good. Ding-Dongs are great. Ding-Dongs, cupcakes, Ho-Hos, they're all basically the same thing, just different shape. Here I am trying to get healthy, and we talking about the good shit. <laughs> hey, we talk about cracking shit, too. That doesn't mean we're going to go smoke it. <laughs> Saying. We're just talking no, about it. No, n- never tried it, never will. You know, I'm in in my fifties. It's too late to try that that stuff anyway. So hey, never tried, sold maybe. <laughs> no, no, not me. No, no, me neither. If y'all saw me on the corner, I was just you know passing time. <laughs> All right, let's get into sports here. This is this is the the meat of the conversation today. Um. <clears throat> How'd, how'd your team do Sunday? They won. I know. Sarcasm. Oh, I thought you didn't watch. No, no. I, I saw it. I, remember I, mean, I, told, they didn't... I told you when the Raiders went up 14-9, I'm like, there's a lot of football left to be played. Because I, I, I've seen this song and dance before. Well, yeah, I mean, so have we when our receivers were actually catching the ball, but I was more worried that the bigger the hole, the worse it's going to be. And we've already well, lost to the Broncos, so yeah. Well, y'all didn't let y'all didn't let the hole get that big this time. <laughs> no, we didn't. Um, I mean, it really wasn't big against Denver till the fourth quarter, and that's when you know we did a turnover, and then they went ahead, but. No, we spotted y'all 14. And 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 see, that's the thing about the Chiefs. If they went up 10, 12, 14 points and we, you know, kept pace, I could see the bottom falling out. But because we were up, there's just something about the Chiefs. When they get it in gear, they can go. So they're more dangerous when the game is close. I mean, when, when they're down. Excuse me. They're more dangerous when they're down because they can strike and strike again. And have done it so they're they're comfortable with it. You yeah. know, they 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 know they can do it. But as a fan watching them, you know, watching us lose to Philadelphia on dropped passes, you know, and then you come in here and you're like, geez, you know, got that hangover from playing the Eagles, and then now you got a division rival, you know, you're playing them and yeah, I, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I was a little nervous in the first quarter. Yeah, but um, by halftime, I was straight. Yeah, well, halftime was fourteen fourteen. It was over at that point. Right. You know, once you knot it up, it's like they got it going. Who gets the ball back to start the third quarter? Chiefs. There it is. It's over. 
I would I would say though I was pretty impressed with your guys's rookie quarterback O'Connell. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, he's making some decent throws. Even the game before that, when they played Miami, I mean, well, that's he, the thing that's hurt us. Um, hate to bring up genius Josh again, but we are still using his plays to finish out the year. I think if the offensive coordinator had stuck with more passes in the third quarter instead of trying to run it, you know, you can't run up the middle on Kansas City all day. You can't. They the did in time, the first quarter? Well, no, nah, the one time we got them good runs, Jacobs took it to the outside. Well, now he went through the he went through the guard and then bounced to the outside on that 80 yard bomb. He didn't it wasn't a sweep. Yeah, it wasn't a sweep. It was a but... dive right up the middle and he went over the left guard and it popped wide open and he took off. But but um, it wasn't happening again after that. Okay, but but first of all, stop with the McDaniels plays. Okay. Well, so realistically, I mean, but, that's what they've no, already said. That's what realistically they are. they're not because a sweep for the Chiefs is the same sweep for the Raiders. A sweep is a sweep. It is a slant but, is a slant. But the question is, do you have the right personnel to carry that out? Most coaches call plays depending on the type of players they have. Of course they do. You got. Jacoby Myers, you have Devontae Adams, and and, you and those Jacoby. are those are receivers. So if they had stuck yeah, with for the slants. pass, I have no problem the, with that. But you got the man in the backfield that that rushed for hundred yards in the first half. So why would you ditch that? Oh, and I never said ditch I'm, it. Uh, if they I'm were trying, just calling the same running play. If I'm trying to, well, see, then you say they're calling the same running play. But maybe you should give the Chiefs defense a little bit of credit for adjusting and stopping the run, no matter what the run call true. They, they call. Very it. true. Very true. How, however, if I was the Raiders, I would also have tried to run the ball majority of the time just to keep Mahomes' butt on the sideline. Because if Mahomes ain't on the field, he can't score touchdowns. Now, the only difference this year is that our our, our defense is pretty stout. So... It's not as easy as it has been the last four or five years. But, I mean, you, you can't keep blaming the guy that got fired three or four weeks ago for the way that you guys are playing now. He's gone. No, no. as far as their play, I, I, even in the losses, I see improvement because they are showing heart. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're definitely taking the, the uh, persona of the head coach. But I just, you know, just watching strictly the quarterback, I was I was impressed with how he was delivering the ball, uh, getting the ball out of his hands, um, you know, until the end of the game where he's not used to making those adjustments to the adjustment, mm -hmm. you know. So you so as a defense, you show a rookie different uh, uh, looks defensively, so he can't. He thinks he sees cover two, and it might be cover zero. You know, you're just disguising yeah. it or whatever. So, you know, I see that's where he needs to improve. But when he's out there and, you know, dealing with the script plays, the first 15 to 20 plays of the game and, you know, adjusting, the, he, he he was delivering the ball very I – was, I was pretty impressed. Better than Garoppolo. I was actually excited when O'Connell got hurt, and I was like, yes, Garoppolo's coming in. <laughs> and then uh, O'Connell went back out, and I was like, damn. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, at that point, I probably would have turned it off. Because <laughs> you know it's coming after that. So yeah. overall, um, Kansas City, let's see who they've got up next. It looks Green like uh, Green Bay. Um, in Green Bay. Sunday night I, football, baby. I, I I don't see Kansas City losing that game, but um, I think it'll be a closer game than the Vegas game because I think the Green Bay's defense is much improved, and and their quarterback is starting to come into his own. I mean, he's no Favre, he's no Rodgers, but he he's been serviceable. Kansas yeah, I mean, that game. I, I, 
as a as a pure fan, I'm I'm a little nervous about this one, to be honest. You think um, it's a trapdoor game? No, not at all. Uh we've already had our trap game, and that was against Denver. Um just because I you know how they played on Thanksgiving against mm-hmm. Detroit. Um the mentality that they had. Because you know, Detroit, Detroit ain't no slouch, you know. Right. I um, mean, if if Kadarius Tony was born with hands, we would have beat them in the first game. Uh, but you know, they're you know, they're pretty they're pretty tough. And but you know, Green Bay being a division rival knew how what to expect. So I kind of take that, you know to heart well but you know last time we played uh the packers i believe was in 2021 and it was in arrowhead Mm -hmm. and i believe it was one of jordan love's first games i think you're right and that came down to the wire so this being in green bay him having a couple years under his belt I expect it to be very competitive. Um, However, if we can continue to run the ball and our receivers can continue to catch and they start showcasing Rasheed Rice more than Watson, I don't think there's a team in the league that'll be able to beat us. That's true. I'm thinking more about y'all's run game. Because everybody knows what you need in the playoffs is a run game. And that kid, Pacheco, amazes me every single time I watch him. I mean... Yeah, he he runs like the ground owes him money. And he's I mean, beating he's, the hell out of that ground, too. Yeah, he is. Just stomping. Uh, he he impressed me Sunday. He he continues to impress me. If he can... If he, if he has a better vision... He would be Kareem Hunt esque. Kareem Hunt had the best vision, but they run with the same enthusiasm and power. Uh, but if he can improve his vision through the hole, letting the block set up before he makes his cuts instead of just ramming into the line, I think he runs um, with more power than Hunt. You're right; he doesn't have that vision, but I think he runs yeah, with more I mean, power. He, it's a different power, but they're both powerful backs. I mm-hmm. think I think Pacheco's a little bit taller, maybe yeah. a little bit thicker. Uh, but you know what 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 made Kareem Hunt good is his vision. Yeah. Um, and that's where Pacheco lacks. But I mean, he's picking up blocks like a champion. Um man, if we and if we can do that and get him to catch out of the backfield. NFL is going to be upset. Yeah. All right. So the Chargers continue to do Charger stuff because they lost. Yeah. They disappoint me. They didn't disappoint me because I see it. The Chargers are the Chargers. But Not, Sunday I just noon, mean that, they've got the Patriots coming in. I'm just saying they're disappointing because on paper they should be so much better. But that's the they problem. Are. They're they're on paper. They're supposed to be the best team in the AFC every year. Why? What have they I'm, ever done that should make them that good? It's it's the talent, man. It's they have the talent. Like I just don't know if it's. I I don't know. I, I you know their their quarterback. You know is probably top twelve, thirteen, fourteen in the league. Their running back is probably same, top 10, 12. They got a great tight end. They got great wide receiver. Mm-hmm. They have an average offensive line. Their defense isn't no – I mean, they're not the 2,000 Ravens or the 85 Bears, but, you know, they're – I'd say they're probably 15, 16, you know, so they're like real mid-range. They should be better than what their record is. Especially when you're playing against the Raiders and, and I mean, no disrespect, but you're playing against the Raiders and the Broncos. And I mean, now you got the Patriots, you know, who suck and you know, you're playing, you've been in the last place for what last couple of years, maybe, or they've been second. They've been, they've been second to last the Broncos have been in the last place. So you're still playing like a third place schedule. Yeah. So 
you're you're playing against not necessarily playoff teams. You know, you're playing the bottom barrel of the league, and and you're still, yeah, they're just disappointing. I mean, because you look at them and you see the talent on the field, and you're like, man, these guys. I mean, go to the week one when they played Miami. I mean, they were going score to score with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they lost, but you know, it they, it wasn't like when the Broncos played Miami. You That's know, so true. Sandy, you know, San Diego. I keep doing that. The Chargers, you know, they they're just disappointing overall. But they should beat the Patriots. I said all that to say that you know they should beat the Patriots because the Broncos, Patriots are a dumpster fire. The Broncos are going into Houston to play the Texans. This intrigues me. That ought to be a good game. I, I agree. Um, I want to give this game to Houston though. Where's that? It it's in Houston, and that's the only edge that I'm giving because of the home team. And I feel like Houston should have won last weekend. They couldn't quite pull it out. And and, and I think D'Amico Ryans has, he's got this team going in the right direction. Oh yeah. That's CJ Stroud. He is a, he, he's playing like the 2018 Patrick Mahomes. He's just taking the NFL on by fire. He just, you know, he's just doing things that I like. Yeah, I seen that back in 18 when when my man was playing his first year as starter. Um man, this is almost a pick 'em game cuz they're so close. Mm-hmm. And Denver's on a what a 5 or 6 game winning streak, 5 game winning streak. The 6 and 5, they were 1 and 6 and now they're 6 and 5. Yeah, so um I'm going to give the slight edge to Houston, but I would not be surprised if the Broncos pulled this off because Broncos are actually fighting for their playoff lives, believe it or not. I know. Once once we once we dropped out of the playoff hunt, I, I liked seeing that shield in the hunt for the playoff picture, but uh, as of Sunday night, it was replaced by a horse. So what the hell, man? Um, yeah, there's, there's plenty. Have y'all played the Broncos yet? Once we beat them already, but we got to play okay. them again. So, well, yeah. So, well, no, we don't. We have to play you guys again. Yeah. Um, and then we have to play the Chargers again. Have you played the Chargers? They beat us the first time. We have to play them again, though. So, you know, you still have your own destiny in front of you. Who you guys? Who are you playing this week? We have a bye. The Raiders are oh, on okay. their bye week. So it's a get right week, and then they got Minnesota next week. You definitely should not lose this week. Stranger things have happened, my friend. <laughs> no, um, we're we're going to be good. Now, since you and I are on the same mind for these divisional games, I want to talk about one game that's not even in the AFC. I think it's going to be the game in the week. The 49ers at the Eagles. Man. NFC Championship rematch. Yeah, they'll they'll see each other again at the end of this year, too, I believe. I, I'm giving this to the 49ers, though. Yes, the Eagles are hot, but they're pulling out games late and or in overtime. San Francisco is still just putting people away. True, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Uh-oh. Get, give me... their top three victories 49ers that they played that are impressive mm. Mm, mm, mm. I, I i see where you go with this i can't do it i see I mean, where you, you go just, with this you can just go to the last two weeks for the eagles they played us now they played the bills um i, I like where your head's at i like where your head's at that that sheds some light on it right there I don't, I'm not going to discount the Eagles the way that they've been playing because regardless of how the game starts, they tend to know how to finish and they tend to to make the other team make one mistake Mm -hmm. that they cash in on, which is something that they did not do last year. 
That's why the Chiefs were able to beat them in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Because the Chiefs cashed in on the Eagles' mistake. And like and that, that was though. that was the difference. How now? I mean, on paper, the 49ers should win this game. No, I'm going to say this. This is unpopular opinion, but I'm going to say this. If the Eagles win this game, hand them the Lombardi trophy now. No. I'm just saying that. You can hand them a spot to play for it, but they're going to have to be Baltimore or Kansas City to to have a parade. I, I don't got that. I guarantee you, if the Chiefs play the Eagles again, we will win. I can see that. But I'm 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 gonna go ahead and pick the 49ers to win this game. I said all that to say that. So there you go. <laughs> all right. That that's our show, everybody. Um, and that's why we're called slightly warped, because we can go one direction just to flip it at the last second. That's show right. take us on out of here. Love each other. It's Miles Now Promise. Hit the subscribe. Hit the like. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Later.